Hello everybody and welcome to another Eigenverse tutorial. Today I'll be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to show you how to make a really neat dissolving effect in Houdini. And this tutorial isn't going to be as much about getting the actual DOP simulation as much as it is going to be how to get that DOP simulation into something like Unreal Engine. So it's going to kind of show the workflow of how you get something in from Houdini and into Unreal that you'd normally not be able to do. And we're gonna be using the game devs tool set to do this. So we're going to drop down a geometry node. And then in there, we're going to use the pig head. It's the tried, trusted, and true example for testing out anything you want because it's a pig head and why wouldn't you? So let's go ahead and shatter this pig head. So we're gonna use the Voronoi fracture. And then uh, let's do the VDB. Uh, from polygons. Go ahead and make that a fog. Scatter those. And then your scatter value here is going to determine the pieces. And in Unreal, these pieces are going to be bones. So you want to sort of keep in mind how many bones you're going to want uh, for this for this um, project. Where if you get if it's two if it's like a thousand bones it's going to be a bit overwhelming on the engine you don't want that. So now that we've got this fractured, I'm going to go ahead and just use the shelf tool and go to rigid body. Uh, we can have a tutorial explaining the details of this a bit later, but for right now I'm just going to try to do the pretty easy method. So let's go ahead and do RBD packed object, select the geo. And then you can see it collect, uh, created an auto dot network. And then it also did something inside the geo. So let's take a look at that. So it did this rest, a set of pack prims, and then it's importing the dot. So in the set of pack prims, we're going to want to do something in the, so it'll help us in the future. And that's create this named attribute. So when we're going to be using, when we're going to be importing it into Unreal, it's going to recognize the bone names as names. So we can go ahead and look at the geometry spreadsheet and see that it's named each piece zero through piece 254. So those are gonna be eventually our bones. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it did in the auto dot network. So it created the geo and it's merging in case you have multiple ones. And then it has the rigid body solver, which is the important part. And then merging just in case if you wanna add other things and then it's gonna have gravity. For this effect, I'm gonna go ahead and bypass the gravity. Um, it's, I'm going to sort of want an ethereal subspace thing and gravity isn't gonna necessarily help us out with that. So to get a sort of wispy explosion sort of thing, we're gonna use the pop wind. And this is a pretty useful um, node in, in the, the, this is a pretty useful node for the Houdini dops where generally you can use this to get that kind of noisiness that you want for either these rigid bodies or pops. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this to the post solve. And then if we play it, it shouldn't do anything quite yet. So let's go ahead and manipulate these. So right now it's on an amplitude of one. Let's go ahead and crank that up to two. Let's see what it looks like. So it's a windiness and you can see they're crashing into it. It's already a pretty neat effect. I'm going to go ahead and decrease this pulse length to 0.25. And there's a lot of things you can do to change the overall look. You can change the swirl size, the turbulence, all that kind of stuff. You can experiment to whatever you want. And then you can also look in this geo node, sort of get the, uh, the data of the collisions if that's important to you. But for right now, I'm just trying to get the basic point across. So I'm going to sort of leave these as is. So I'm going to go up and I'm also going to change a couple of things in these auto dot networks. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, change the subsets to two. And I'm also going to set the scale time to two, where I want this to happen sort of fast. In the game I was doing, I wanted a pretty fast fracture. So I wanted to be have the effect, but I wanted to be pretty quick. The other thing I'm going to change here is the start frame. And I'm going to change that to zero. And I'm doing this because I personally ran into problems with Unreal Engine where it sometimes got confused at the start frame. So this is something that I'm doing just as an extra precaution. I'll go over some of the extra precaution things because this ended up being really complicated and not working for a lot of reasons. But uh, it seems like generally, as long as you follow everything, it'll work fine, hopefully. So let's go ahead and uh, go back into this geo and take a look at it. So you can see it's sort of fracturing this and, and putting them to a little swarm. 
and uh, and is a pretty neat effect, but it's not actually exactly what I want right now. Right now, it's just fracturing those pieces into the chunks, and they're flying everywhere. But I think if we can get those chunks to uh, get smaller over time, it'll actually have this sort of disintegration effect, and it'll look really neat. But the problem is, say if you want to do a transform, and then you do the scale, you can see it's just shrinking everything. It's not actually scaling on each individual thing. And in order to get that effect, we're actually going to start using some Vex. And Vex is incredibly useful in Houdini, and it's pretty much once you learn it, you're, the possibilities are endless of things you can do. Unfortunately, I'm still pretty terrible at it, and I generally hand things off to my colleague whenever I need to do the fancy Vex. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now, and he can explain things way better than I can. Thank you, Nathan. All right, let's see. What do we got here? What valuable contribution have you added to our industry? Exploding pig head. That sounds practical. But now there's pig brains scattered all over the place. Um, and I think that this effect would be much better and much cleaner if the pig exploded into oblivion. So let's shrink away those pieces of debris over time. Uh, but in order to do that, we're going to need to dive into what those pieces actually are so that we can hack them and destroy them. So let's drag out here a tab and add down our favorite node ever, the point angle. Okay, so now each one of these things is what we call a packed primitive, um, assuming that Nate did the previous section correctly. And uh, what the packed primitives are very good for so many reasons. They're just what you want every time you're dealing with basically any sort of particle, any sort of particle that has a shape to it. And if you go into the uh, geometry spreadsheet, you can see your, uh, go to the primitive sections here, which is this little downward thing. And there's all of our primitives. And all the information uh, about those primitives is all stored here. And you might say, oh, that doesn't look like a lot of information. Um, it's all the same same thing over and over again, piece one, piece two, though. Turns out there are these things called prim intrinsics. And if we click on this intrinsic and say, show all intrinsics, you will see all the intrinsic information in those prims. And there is a lot of them. Let's just hide all that now, but just show the transform and uh, there we go. So here's everything that has to do with how big these pieces are, where they are, and how they're rotated. What are all these numbers here? That's what's called a matrix three. It's a transform matrix. And uh, we are going to modify this transform matrix three with this expression. So let's go over here. First of all, let's figure out exactly what we want to do. Okay, what do we got here? We have 240 frames. Sure, let's just say that it goes for 240 frames and until it totally goes in blue. Nah, it should be oblivion by the 64th frame. First, let's just narrow this down to, uh, let's go from zero to 63. That's a good number. You often want to start at zero, especially when you're importing into Unreal. Um, because a zero frame has some importance. Um, so now what we're going to do is we are going to say, let's get a number to represent the size that these pieces should be. So uh, float, um, let's call it, uh, let's call it SC for scale, equals, um, let's get one minus the frame number, um, which I believe is that at frame, yes. Also one, one other point, we dropped a point wrangle, but really we're wrangling the prints. So Let's run over the prims instead, primitives. Um, so one minus the frame number. Uh, that means it'll be one at zero and zero at one. But let's say that it becomes zero at the frame over uh, 64 or 63, just in case that's as far as we export. So one minus at frame over 63. Now this should go from one to zero over 63 frames. Um, now we're going to store this in a vector because vectors are what um, the scale really is. Scale in X, scale in Y, scale in Z. It's all the same for us, but just because we're working with the matrices, got to do that. So vector vec SC um, equals uh, set SC, SC, SC. You have to have that set uh, when you're declaring a vector. 
using information from variables like that. So the next thing we need to do is make our transform matrix. The first thing we'll want to do is get a local variable here of the intrinsic transform value. So let's say matrix three intrins transform, uh, let's call it uh, interturn. That doesn't sound hard to remember. And uh, set that equal to prim intrinsic of the zeroth geometry, the transform attribute. And we want to get whatever prim we're working on. So at prim num semicolon. Now we need to get the matrix that we're going to multiply uh, onto this intrinsic transform in order to make a trick. So we're going to do matrix, let's call this the scale TRN and set that equal to make transform, which will automatically make a nice transformation matrix for us. Now, the first thing we need to specify is an integer representing the order of translate, rotate, and scale. It doesn't matter, so we're going to say zero. Next, we're going to specify an, an integer specifying the order of x, y, z rotation, which also doesn't matter, so we're going to say zero. And uh, next, we're going to say the transformation, uh, the translation transformation, which is zero, zero, zero. And next, we're going to say the rotation transformation, which is also zero, zero, zero. And now we're going to simply add something that isn't zero, and we're going to add the VEC SC. Um, this is going to be what we're scaling by, which we set up here. And then last, we specify a pivot location. We want that to be the position, which is in at P, as usual. Uh, and then a semicolon there. Now all that's left is to apply this scale transform to the intrinsic transform by means of multiplication. So uh, intrinsic transform times equals the matrix three of the scale transform, semicolon. And now we have changed this uh, intrinsic transform, although we've only changed the local variable of it, we need to set it back up into the attribute level. So then we will say set prim intrinsic of the zeroth geometry. We want to set its transform attribute for the prim number that we're working with. And of course, we want to set it to our local variable of the intrinsic transform. And semicolon. And if I've added enough semicolons here, then this should compile and let's highlight it, look at it and see what it does. And just as expected, it doesn't work. One minus, is it at frame? Yeah. Now you need to know that there's many different ways to represent uh, the frame in Houdini. There's dollar uh, f, there's dollar ff, um, but you need to know that at frame is not one of them. Instead, you have to say at frame. Uh, and, and now when you hit play, bam, it, it goes into oblivion. And that's how you prim wrangle a pig. And uh, with that, the graphics programmer has done his duty and he's ready to throw it back at the actual artist. So please. Yeah. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too intimidating for everybody. It was a bit intimidating for us, but uh, right! <laughs> it doesn't matter. So let's get this prepped into going into Unreal. So the first thing you need to know is that generally the scale of Houdini is much smaller. So we're going to go ahead and just increase this to be a uniform scale of 100. So that's a lot bigger of a pig. You can also go ahead and do a normal on top of that. And then... What you're going to want to do to export this is you're going to want to go to the out and they're going to be RDB to FBX. So you need to know that this isn't in the engine by default. This is actually part of the game dev tool set. The game dev tool set is an incredibly useful thing for game developers. It sometimes does things in, in non-traditional ways, 
but it allows you to do a lot of things you would never be able to do otherwise. And a lot of times when you just want something to look like it does in game, like how you're seeing it uh, in your, you know, Houdini screen, the game dev tool set is really helpful. So there's an in-depth tutorial exactly how to install that. You, it's up here on this shelf. And then usually there's a spot for the to update tool set. If not, you can go on the GitHub. But um, there's plenty of resources for that. And I do highly uh, recommend experimenting around with it and sort of going on the Houdini Learn tab to figure out more about this. So let's go ahead and go into this. And then we're going to render the... Um, Geo one, we just called it for right now. Generally, you should name it something better, but I'm a bit lazy. So then you, this is the export path and then the frame range. So uh, the other thing about this uh, RBD to FBX is I've had a lot of issues with it in the past where for some reason it would only work once and it was very hard to tell why and I had to keep deleting it and reusing it. Other times I had to specifically go into this control and then do current frame rate or specify frame range. But last I checked, if you have the most recent build and the most recent build of everything, it was working. But just keep in mind, there are some random things that can go wrong and you sort of just have to figure it out just in case things go wrong. So go ahead and click render and this will take a little bit. Okay, so here I am in the content examples with the cool sun temple. So let's go ahead and drag this in and see if it works. So one thing you are gonna make sure you want to check is import animations, make sure to have that on. It recognizes it's a skeletal mesh, which is a good sign. Let's go ahead and open this up. And success, it actually did work, which seems like it shouldn't be a surprise, but uh, for some reason, <laughs> when I was, this was really one of the first things I was trying to do in Houdini and it really bothered me. But so with the evolution of Unreal and uh, Houdini as programs, or the co-evolution as it is, um, the, there's been a lot more support for some of the more experimental Houdini features in the more recent versions of Unreal. So uh, if this isn't working, we highly recommend that you do all of your work in Unreal 420. And if your project happens to be in 419 or earlier, well, uh, heaven help you. <laughs> So obviously this is a really cool effect and you probably could do this with a, you know, I was gonna say pop it in Unreal Niagara or Cascade or something like that. But the bigger grand scheme of things is getting something from Houdini to Unreal that normally you wouldn't be able to. So say if you did want to simulate an animation simulating gravity where everything bumps into each other, um, you theoretically could do a lot of that stuff, but it's a lot of times easier if you want just something in Houdini and you love how that looks and you want that into Unreal. So that's one of the greatest benefits of, of using Houdini and using these game dev tool sets and using Unreal. You just, they work really well together. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to add a couple of materials to make this cool. Uh, and I'll show you the end project in the end slide. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, if you want me to do uh, a more in-depth tutorial on DOPS. They deserve their entire series and they're a really big part of Houdini. Um, so I've kind of breezed over things because I didn't want to get too bogged down in the details because really I could talk, you know, hours about them. So thank you so much. And I hope that you continue watching our tutorial series and we can teach you some things. Goodbye. <laughs>